So let's see how well my health does with this little Bible study with many scriptures to look at, but I thought it was interesting. And like I said, we got much scripture to look at, and then we'll follow through when we're done. Now she keep us in prayer. Much things going on right now, but in Genesis chapter 7, we got verses 8 and 9. Of the clean beasts, and of the beasts that are not clean, and the fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. Now you got the clean and unclean, birds. Things that creepeth on the earth, you really ants, earthworms, crickets. They went in two and two unto Noah's ark. God called these animals to go into the ark. And not only did, I mean, it wasn't just, okay, you know, here's the giraffes and here's the elephants and here's the dogs and here's the coyotes. They went into that ark. A male giraffe, a female giraffe. A male elephant, a female elephant. A male cricket, a female cricket. Male and female, as God had commanded Noah. Now those animals came to Noah. Noah didn't gather those animals. He was busy preaching and building the ark. We run to Genesis chapter 8, and I hope you can see on the screen. Genesis 8, and my terrible writing. That hasn't stuck. That's gotten worse. <laughs> and the dove came in. To him, Noah, in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. That dove could just came in the ark. Hi. Right. <laughs> that leaf symbolizes, hey, you know what? The earth is not underwater anymore. There is vegetation. So that, that's another part of our study. Well, as we're going along, Exodus. Exodus chapter 8. Verses 22. And I will sever the land of Goshen where Israel were, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. I will put a div division between my people Israel and thy people Egypt. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so, and there was a grievous swarm of flies unto the house of Pharaoh, unto his servants' houses, and all the land of Egypt. And the land was corrupted by the reason of the swarms of flies. And yet not a fly was in the land of Goshen. Not a fly desert, uh, bothered, pestered a child of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God's people. God directed don't know if he spoke, but he directed those flies. You go there, you go there, you go there, but you don't go there. I'm telling you, it's interesting with the flies, and I'm, I'm bringing these up, because there's nothing more comical. I can sit down at the end of the day or in the morning, wake up, and say, you know what? I'm going to study my Bible. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to lay out something with Bible. And I'm at my desk. And, you know, I watch videos and do other things on my computer. And the moment that I sit down to go study my work, there's a fly. There's something bugging. There's a moth. And I got to shoo them into a, you know, I carry bug spray. Or these bugs that come in here. There was no bug spray. The animals were directed by God. 
The animal was directed to go in that ark. The animal was directed to, to grab that leaf. The animal was directed, you go there, you don't go there. Interesting. Numbers 22. Numbers 22. And verse 28. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, the animal, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done to thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And then Balaam carries a conversation with a donkey. And Hollywood comes up with the, you know, the talking ass, Francis and all that. And we got talking asses out of Washington, D.C. and some talking asses out of pulpits. But this is an animal. God opened her mouth. And she directs her conversation to Balaam. I know some Christian, you know, if the Lord would open up their mouths, they would they would go and speak other stupid things. Because Christians speak stupid things. The, the ass never spoke in a day in her life. And God opened her mouth. And there was no foolishness out of that mouth of that ass. You would think an ass. Foolishness. Not this case. First Kings. First Kings. Chapter 13. First Kings 13, 24. My handwriting is terrible. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by, and the lion also stood by the carcass. A hungry lion doesn't do that. Now this is prophecy of a false prophet to a prophet of God who disobeyed God. And this is laid out by the prophecy of God to the false prophet, to the disobeying prophet, that this lion would do what just happened. But I have led, I have read books about African lions. And when an African lion is hungry, you only find a mere pieces of bones of humans. You don't find an ass and the carcass of a man. You may find the ass, but you wouldn't find a carcass. You'll find a bone. And a lion wouldn't be there with a group of people. Chapter 17. 1 Kings 17. Verse 6. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. A, a bird brought bread. And the bread and the flesh in the evening. And he drank of the book. This is Elijah. You're telling me that these are birds who have not eaten the bread? And flesh? Ravens are, are, are carnivorous. They eat flesh. Now, I know there's tradition that, you know, from the kitchen and all that, but we're not talking tradition. The very fact is that these birds brought Elijah bread and flesh that these birds eat. And they brought it to a prophet of God. That's quite interesting. Jonah. I know Jonah's not believed. Jonah, we got two in Jonah, 117. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish. Here is a great fish. We know it's a whale. And God made this whale for a purpose. To swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights where he died. All the things that this, this whale, this great big fish could have done. And God prepared this whale from birth. I got a job for you, Mr. Whale. 
that this whale had to be at a certain place, at a certain time, at a certain event, as Jesus Christ had to be at Calvary at a certain time and at a certain event. Jonah wasn't even where he was supposed to be. Jonah was supposed to be on his way to Nineveh. Jonah is rebellion. The great fish is not rebellion. God already knew what would happen. And God prepared, and this goes to, you know, the hardened heart of Pharaoh. God already knew what Pharaoh would do. Jonah. You see, you're not really saying much. We're not, this is not the subject of our study. This is illustration and examples of our study. And the Lord spake unto the fish, here he goes again, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Mr. Fish, I got a great meal for you. You see that man swimming over there? Eat him. Okay. Mm, tastes good. Thank you, Lord. Mr. Fish, yes, God, I got a job for you. What? That piece of meat I just gave you? Yeah, vomited it out. Oh, well, you know, Lord, he's hungry. I, I, he was delicious. And I really enjoyed him. And he's, he's a digest. No, that's not, what the, that's not what the fish did. The fish went to dry land. And he threw up Jonah at the command of God. At the command of God, the fish ate Jonah. At the command of God, the, 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 the whale had a great big Jonah ball. You know, cats in their fur ball. Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 17. And I hope my voice, my voice sounds squeaky to me. I hope it don't to you. So, Matthew 27. I mean, Matthew 17, Matthew 17, 27. Notwithstanding, least thou should offend him, go into the sea and cast in a hook. Take up the fish that thou first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money and take it and give it unto him for me. That's tax money. Jesus paid taxes, but that's not, that's not the subject. Let me wet my... Here's a fish story again. God said to a male fish, you see that piece of coin over there? What's a coin? Well, see that thing over there? Eat it. The fish went over there. He ate the coin. Peter drops his fishy line in the water. I don't know how many other fish were there, but that one Pacific male fish take him up Male. He tells that fish, all right, you see that fishing line over there, that hook? I want you to grab onto that hook. Come on, you ever been fishing? You know how hard it is to fish? And that one fish with the coin that obeyed God, obeyed God and, and got on that hook. And Peter took him up, he got the coin and paid the tax. Now, you know anybody's gone fishing, you know that that's a miracle. That's God. Matthew 21. Matthew 21, verse 5. Tell ye the doors of Sion, behold the king, Jesus, cometh on the meek and sitting upon an ass, and the colt of the foal of an ass. You don't jump on a colt of an ass and start riding. That animal needs to be broken, work, however they do with ass. But you don't just walk up to this animal, hop on the back of it, and it carries you to where you want to go. 
without fighting, without stubbornness. It carried Jesus into the city. That's a miracle. And then we got Daniel. 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 Chapter 6. 22. My God has sent his angel and has shut the, mouth, the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. The angels were sent by God for those lions and the lions then where Daniel is. Right, you guys just keep your mouths quiet. You guys keep those mouths closed. You don't even open those mouths. Don't you even harm that prophet. Again, this is one of them lions. Lions don't do this. Those lions were bred in that den for torture of people. Now, Genesis 3.6 And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to desire to make one wife, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Um, <clears throat> hello? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello? God said, Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And man disobeyed. Those male and female animals that went in the ark didn't disobey. Man, from the very beginning, God said not to, and they did. How's that? Chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Now, we got to read into this one a little bit, but verses 4 and 5. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock, and of the fruit thereof, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance failed. You would assume that these boys knew that they were what they were supposed to do because they knew to bring an offering before God. Somewhere along the line, Cain would have learned from Adam, his father, that the ground was cursed. There would be no upsetting of the fact that, oh, oh God, I, I, I brought the wrong offering. This is not approved of you. Abel, what can I give you for one of the blood and, the, and fat of, the, of your animals? No, they knew. Man is not sent in blind and undirected by God and what God wants. God will tell man what is expected. So, with the assumption of verses 4 and 5, Cain already knew what God expected. Cain just didn't believe God. And Cain did not listen to God as his mother and father and as all mankind does unlike the animals, because the bird brought into the ark a leaf to show, hey, everything's getting better out in, the, out in the world. The earth is vegetation. Chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get thee out of thy country, leave the country, from thy kindred, your family, from thy father's house, your family, unto a land that I will show thee of. That sounds good. I want you out. I want you separated. I want you gone. Sounds good. Verse 4. So Abram departed. All right, Abram. As the Lord has spoken unto him. All right, Abram. And Lot went with him. Get the other country from thy kindred, from thy father's house. And Lot went with them. That's not what God told Abram. That's not what God told Abram. 
Have we seen the animals obeying God? And have we seen man not obey God? Exodus. Five. Exodus 5, 2. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? And to let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Now this is just common for most and all men. I don't mean all as an entire population, but even Christians, God says something and they don't obey. Now they know the Lord, they're saved. But it's a little lost, man. I, I'm not going to listen. I don't know who God is. I got my gods. I got my religion. And Exodus 5, 2 is a general statement true for save and for the lost. Only to save no God. And you still don't obey. And that's me too, my friend. There are things that God tells me, and I don't do it. Or the things that God tells me, and I do it when I'm not supposed to do it. And I've seen many in the world in public ministry. But the flies know where to go and the flies don't and obey God. And the flies went to where they were supposed to go and they didn't go where God didn't want them. Interesting. Numbers 14. And all the congregation lifted their voice, cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses, against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God we had died in the land of Egypt, and would God we had died in this wilderness. That's not obeying God. You know, Israel and the Christian has seen the miracles and the signs and the wonders of God more so for Israel. They had seen God. I mean, there were events in Egypt that was only to the Egyptians and not to the children of Israel. How on earth, and I can't explain it, how on earth was there no light in Egypt and yet there was light in Goshen? How on earth, outside the realm of God, did uh, firstborn and die this house, but this house that had blood, there was no firstborn dead. And down the street, th there was no blood, and the firstborn died. And then there was no blood. The, the firstborn of the cows and the sheep died with the firstborn family. And yet this house had blood. There was no firstborn dead. I mean, it's typically of a tornado. A tornado can come in through in the whole neighborhood, but one house would be trashed. Israel seen what no Christian seen, a complete sea, the Red Sea, open up, and at the bottom of that Red Sea, dry land. And yet there are wonders, there are miracles that in my Christian life, and I've got to admit there are events in my life today that I lack faith. I'm not going to move a mountain. I am not going to say to a mountain, hey, be removed and go off into the sea, though the Bible said I am capable. But that father said, Lord, help my unbelief. And yet we find lions obeying God. Those lions would have fought over Daniel's body. And yet they laid there so Daniel could have a good night's rest. And we come to the conclusion, the book of Hebrews, over the children of Israel, they did not believe God. And that's to the worst, I think, was it Felix or, or um, Agrippa, was it? That almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Those are terrifying statements in the Bible. I don't 
believe you, God. Thou almost persuaded me. He did not have enough belief in God as the children of Israel had lacking belief in God and even Pilate. What is true? You don't believe. The animals got to believe because they obeyed. I believe if a God tells a dog, bite him, that dog's going to bite him. I believe that. From the scriptures we're reading, Numbers 20. I believe God directs animals. And I believe animals obey. Uh, verse 8. Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron, thy brother. Speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. Verse 11. And Moses lifted up and Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smoke the rock. Good old Moses. Great Moses. Moses is lifted up by the children of Israel. Abraham and Moses are lifted up. God said, Moses, speak to the rock. Moses, wham! You don't go into promised land. Yet sheep and goats and animals that were is the children of Israel, Israel went into the promised land. Moses didn't. Why? Because we humans, I, I'll put myself in a lump, we humans, we males and females, no other sex, that were created by God, disobey God. I spoke with one man in my life. Oh, I never sinned. That's a bunch of crock. And you got, I've, I've seen, I, I've sat under men in, in churches, pastors, you know, the, they're the ivory shower, they're the voice of God. And you can't do nothing unless you get their permission. You're a sinner. Somewhere along the line, you disobeyed God. I, I'm going to come right out and say, I have disobeyed God. God said to do it, I didn't do it. God said, don't do it, and I did it. I'm on both realms of the coin. We'll come to a character in the Bible where, every, where much lifted up and he sinned. He sinned. John 13. I hope you see where we're going now. Where we lie with man. Man. Peter says unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. He's speaking to God. <laughs> And God, Jesus, is washing the disciples' feet. Not going to wash my feet. Oh, yeah, okay, you rebellion. And we pick on Peter. And we got Christians that, you know, they, they amplify their position. And yet, do you go in the world and, and preach the gospel? I've liked them to church. That's not what Jesus said. I let my light shine is one of the excuses I get. That's not what Jesus said. Do you go preach the gospel? Do you pray and help your enemies? Do you hate your brother when the Bible says you're not to? There is something in the scriptures, my friend, Christian, where God says do it and you don't. And there are things in the scriptures that the Bible says don't do it. And you do. And I've already admitted and confessed that sin. It's called rebellion and it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. Don't eat that fruit. And she ate that fruit. David. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not clear. Is it any clearer? All 
All right, Christian. Whosoever, whosoever looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. How you doing? You didn't need to sleep with that woman. You didn't need to get naked with that woman. But did you argue with that woman? Did not Paul, the Apostle Paul, said that coveting is lusting? Have you not wanted something? I mean, have you wanted something that you don't have? I fall in that realm. I'm content with my Christian life, but Lord, I'd like to have a wife. I am I am content with my Christian life, but I hope the tests come back uh, in good favor of me and my help. And there are Christians out there. I am content, but I get a promotion. Acts 21. Acts 21. All right, Acts 21. Ready? Verse 4. Finding disciples, he tarried there seven days, who said to Paul, through the Spirit, inspiration of the Holy Spirit, thou he should not go to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit inspiration told those men of God, hey, Paul, yes, don't go to Jerusalem. 21.11 And when he was come unto us, this would be Abagus, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, that must have been an interesting illustration, Thus saith the Holy Ghost. Oh, we just said that in verse 4. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth his girdle. It's handcuffs, foot cuffs. And he shall be delivered in the hands of the Gentiles. Have you got it? Let's go back to chapter 20. Verse 22. Paul speaking, I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem. Paul himself had a revelation. Don't go to Jerusalem. Christians told Paul not to go to Jerusalem. Abagus told Paul not to go to Jerusalem. And write it down. Verse 17. And when they were come to Jerusalem, Paul, I mean, we kind of lift Paul up there like Moses. You know, Moses was a murderer. You know, Paul was a murderer. <laughs> What's going on here? I'll tell you one thing for the prayer. If I were to say, I, I, I got a little dog. She's old. <laughs> really don't have to worry about her much. But one of my prayers should be not only for the health of my dog. I pray for the, the health of my dog. It's God, will you tell that dog not to bite nobody? Because I don't want to. The law and the legalness and somebody else to suffer. And if God were to speak to my dog Peanut and say, Peanut, she would. We'll create what? Don't bite anybody. I don't know if God tells that dog daily, whatever, however, but if God were to speak to Peanut, a little chihuahua, Peanut, don't bite anybody. I don't know if he says it daily or hourly, whatever it is, or somebody comes in the house, don't bite them. My dog, my chihuahua peanut, is not going to bite. 
I am full assured of that. If God told my dog Peanut, my little Chihuahua, ages old, not to bite, I know from the scriptures that dog ain't going to bite. I got faith in that. And that could be for your dog, your cat, your pet snake, your pet rat, whatever you got. I know, maybe maybe we should try that. I mean, we got an ant and, and those, those palmetto bugs here in Florida. Maybe we should say, Lord God, keep those in. Because if God would say, okay, listen, my saint is praying, all right, palmetto bugs, don't go in that house anymore. If God tells those palmetto bugs or roaches not to go in your house, did not he tell those flies, don't go in the Atlantic Ocean? That's interesting. Lord just laid that in my heart. I'm not saying name and claim it. And yet, on the other side of the, of the coin of life, of human beings, God has from time to the creation of the first man and the first woman, God said, don't do it. And man does it. Rebellion. And from the time of Cain and Abel, I want you to do this. And Cain did not do it. Rebellion against God. Thou shalt not kill Moses, David, Paul. Thou shalt not commit adultery, David. And quite frankly, all men and women kind. Because I would believe that verse in, in Matthew 5, even women look upon a, a man to lust after him in his heart. We do not do what God tells us to do. We, me included, do not. We do what God tells us not to do. That's rebellion. And friend, I'm a street preacher. I'm evangelist and all that. And I size people up. How many times God just don't give them a gospel track? And I don't. I don't carry them. I forgot to carry them. And I wonder, being down here in Florida, how many times God's protected me from rattlesnakes. There are rattlesnakes here. And there are other snakes. And I wonder how many times God told that snake, you just keep on going the way you're going. Listen, I have seen in the backyard of one of my houses, I have seen one of these snakes in the churchyard. I don't know what it is. I don't want to ask what it is. I don't care to know what it is. I've seen it. Is it deadly or is it not? I don't care. I don't know. I don't want to know. I believe in my heart, God, you just keep on slipping along. You leave that guy alone. Man's all saved the elephant, saved the whale, saved the manatees. And yet his own soul he won't get saved. And Christian. Christian. You know God has said to and you didn't. And you know God said don't do. And you did. If not, I'm just I'm I'm preaching to myself then. I don't think I am, but I know many people have heard my messages and they get, oh, you know, hey, listen, I'll give you the documented facts. I'll give you the scriptural facts. I'll give you what's true. Well, I want to hold on to my my sin. Huh? 
God said, let it go. And I have preached messages for you to go out and do something that scripturally is sound that God says to do. Rightly divide. And yet God speaks to me and things to do I don't do. And there are things I don't, I'm not supposed to do that I do do. And Paul spoke about that. Only one man since Adam has ever overbound this sin of disobeying God. And that's Jesus Christ. Everything that God told Jesus, Jesus did. Everything God told Jesus not to do, Jesus didn't do it. But children of Adam and Eve, we ain't perfect, we're sinners. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us. I hope this was helpful. I thought it was quite interesting. And there's, there's all other kinds of examples. Maybe I missed an animal. Maybe I missed a... It's 41 minutes. That's about how long I go on these messages. I hope it helps. I hope my voice wasn't too froggy. <laughs>